This is lecture number four uh, in this series on control systems two, and uh, we have done some examples on. Uh, we have derived some state-space models of certain uh, electrical circuits. We are continuing with those examples, and uh, so let's assume we have this circuit. We have this electrical circuit. We have uh, three resistances R1, R2, R3, and we have two capacitances C1 and C2. And the important thing here is that we will be having two input sources, VA and VB. And we also we'll be defining two output sources, two outputs, V01 and V02. V01 and V02, they are the voltage across these capacitances C1 and C2. We have two inputs VA and VB. And we have two outputs uh, V01 and V02. So we need to derive the state space model of this uh, multiple input, multiple output system. So far we have done single input, single output systems. This is the first example of multiple input, multiple output systems. Now as we uh, recall, uh, the state variables in any electrical circuit are basically represented by the number of energy storage elements. The number of energy storage elements here are C1 and C2, that's basically 2. So number of state variables will be Number of state variables are two, and what are those state variables? They will be uh, voltage across capacitor one, so we can represent it by x one. We also know in this case that's nothing but v not one, and voltage across c two. That's x two. Well, that's actually nothing but v not two. So we have two state variables x1 and x2 they are defined uh, as the voltage across the capacitors uh, c1 and c2 now we need to actually find out x1 dot and x2 dot uh, we need to actually find out the derivatives uh, of these voltages uh, v01 and v02 so let's assume we have current i1 flowing in this circuit I1 is the current in the circuit, let I2 be flowing through this branch and I3 be flowing through this branch. So, uh, and uh, we let the voltage be here, uh, the voltage be V1 at this node and the voltage at this node be V2. So by KVL, uh, if we have we represent this as loop 1, this as loop 2, and this as loop 3. By KVL in loop 1, we can say the input volt, uh, we have actually input voltage VA and VB, VA and VB, let uh, VA v u1 and v b v u2 the two inputs u1 and u2 so this is u1 and this is u2 so by applying kvl in loop 1 we will be having v a or that's u1 is equal to i1 r1 plus uh, v not 1 or what's actually x1 so in uh, by kvl in loop 1 we have u1 is equal to i1 r1 plus x1 fine uh, so this is one equation but actually the term here is i1 which is unknown to us we need to actually calculate 
the current I1. Now let's take I1 equal to I, by applying K, KCL at node 2. At node 1, sorry. Uh, by applying KCL at node 1, uh, we will be having I1 is equal to I2 plus uh, the current flowing through the capacitor that I already told you is C in this case it's C1 dx1 by dt or what we can write as x1 dot so i1 is equal to i2 plus C1 x1 dot and uh, that means but what is i2 equal to i2 is the current flowing through flowing this branch we know by uh, we can write i2 as v1 the voltage at this node minus v2 divided by r2 v1 minus v2 divided by r2 plus c1 x1 dot v1 is actually the voltage across capacitor 1 that's actually x1 minus v2 is the voltage across capacitor 2 that's x2 so v x1 minus x2 by r2 plus c1 x1 dot so this is I1. So substituting equation number two in equation number one. By substituting equation number two uh, in equation number one, what we'll be getting is uh, U1 is equal to I1. I1 instead of I1, we have this whole equation x1 minus x2 divided by r2 plus c1 x1 dot into r1 so it is u1 is equal to x1 minus x2 divided by r2 plus c1 x1 dot is actually i1 r1 Thus, simply x1, uh, i1, r1 plus x1, i1, where i1 is replaced by this uh, equation number 2. So, rearranging this, uh, we can actually figure out x1 dot from here. So Once you uh, rearrange the terms, you'll be getting x1 dot will be equal to, should be equal to 1 by c1, r1 minus x1 times R1 plus R2 divided by R2 plus uh, X2 times R1 by R2 plus U1. So this is X1. Uh, dot similarly uh, by applying kvl now in loop 3 going back to the figure uh, we have uh, kvl in loop 3 uh, suggests us that uh, vb will be equal to uh, minus i3 r3 plus x2 vb is equal to minus i3 r3 plus x2 uh, vb is nothing but actually the input 2 u2 minus i3 r3 plus x2. So let this be equation number 4. Yeah, this is actually equation number 3. Uh, so now the unknown term is uh, here is actually I3. Now we know that I2, uh, if we apply KCL at node 2, I3 will be equal to I2 minus the current that is flowing uh, 
through branch num through capacitor two that's C two X two dot. So I three is uh, I three is uh, I two minus C two X two dot. Where I two we have already derived it as V X one minus X two by R two. X one minus X two divided by R two minus C two X two dot. So this is equation number five. So substituting equation number five in four. Equation five in equation number four. What we'll be getting is U uh, two is equal to Minus I three R three minus uh, it's actually minus X one minus X two divided by R two minus uh, C X two dot R three C X two dot C two X two dot um, plus X two. So rearranging this to find out x two dot, we can see that x two dot will come out to be equal to minus one by c two r three times minus r three by r two x one plus r two plus r three by r two times x two minus u of two. So this is equation number six. So we now have two equations: equation three and equation six. They are basically x one dot and x two dot. So what happens in case of a multiple input, multiple output system is uh, your B matrix will actually change. So we have x dot equal to x plus b u. A matrix will have the usual two cross two uh, L number. A, uh, x dot is a x plus b u. A, a will be two cross two matrix. Now in this case, we have we used to have u only. Now we have u one and u two. So there will actually be uh, b matrix will also be two cross two for this. Case where you have two inputs and two outputs. So x one dot is something times x one uh, that we actually will be getting that from equation number three plus something times x two uh, plus something times u one plus something times u two. So if you see the equation number three, you will see this is minus r one plus r two divided by c r one r two. Minus is actually outside. Uh, and this element here will be uh, x one dot is this minus r one plus r two c r one r two times x one plus one by c one r two times x two plus one by c one r one times u one plus zero times u two actually. And similarly, x two dot you have obtained that from equation number six. It's one by c two times C two R two times X one minus R two plus R three times divided by C two R two R three times X two plus zero times U one plus one by C two R three times U two. So this is an advantage that's associated with the state space model. All the states are defined in terms of all the inputs. So in case of transfer function model, you can only define the output with respect to one input. But in this case, you can define the trans, you can de derive the states with respect to all the inputs of the system. And uh, as far as the outputs go, y1, which is nothing but v not one, we have or we already know that it's only equal to x1, and y2 is equal to v not two in this case is equal to x2. We have actually two outputs, y1 and y2. 
and they can also be placed uh, in the matrix form like this y1 y2 times y is equal to cx plus du so in this case uh, c and d matrices will also change uh, the order because of the number of inputs and the number of outputs you have B, C, and D matrices, the order of these matrices change. So we know Y1 is nothing but X1. So it's 1 times X1 plus 0 times X2 plus 0 times U1 plus 0 times U2. Whereas Y2 is nothing but X2. So it's 0 times X1, 1 times X2, 0 times U2, and 0 times U1 and 0 times U2. So this is uh, how you can derive uh, multiple, you can derive the state space model of a electrical circuit with multiple inputs and multiple outputs. So continuing with this, uh, let's take another example. Let's say we have uh, this circuit. This is actually, uh, this will be, this is a self So you have the circuit and uh, you have you are asked to actually find out the state space model of this circuit. So you have one input VI, uh, you have another input in this case, uh, it is IS, it's not a voltage input, it's a current source as an input. And you have resistance 4K here, you have inductance 2 Henry's, you have uh, this capacitor here, 0.25 millifarad, and you have another capacitor of 0.5. 0 0.5 millifarad, your resistor of 1k and your outputs here are actually again the voltage y1 and y2 so you have to find this you have to find the solution of this matrix and uh, you understand that there are two capacitors and one inductor so there will be three state variables x1 x2 and x3 so the order of matrix A will be 3 cross 3. You have two inputs, fine. So order of matrix B will be 3 cross 2, fine. Number of state variables, one number of inputs. C matrix, as far as C matrix goes, uh, you have two outputs y1 and y2 so that means uh, because of two outputs uh, you'll be having the matrix order of c will be uh, two cross three two represents here the number of outputs three represents here the number of state variables and you have to uh, so this will be the order of b c and similarly d matrix you have two outputs and two inputs to order of D should be two cross two. So you have to find out basically the state space model of this circuit and come up with the solution of this system. So continuing with examples, let's move on to another type of circuit uh, wherein uh, and let's see how the state space model of this magnetically, magnetically coupled circuit can be derived. Uh, you have a system, you have an input voltage source connected across a capacitor, you have a resistor here, you have an inductor here, you 
as one and you have another circuit resistance of this is a R2 the inductance self inductance of this is L2 and these two inductances they are magnetically coupled that means they also have a mutual inductance M between them and the dot convention basically represents the direction of current in which uh, the direction in which current is induced in the circuits so you have current I1 flowing in this circuit you have current I2 flowing in this circuit let's uh, derive the state space model of this particular uh, circuit this, this is a magnetically coupled circuit it has two inductances a capacitor so there that means number of state variables will be three and uh, let's assume what will be those what will be these three state variables one will be voltage across the capacitor let that be equal to x1 so this voltage is actually your one state variable your another state variable is current through inductor l1 let that be x2 so that means actually the current flowing this circuit is x1 let's delete log this off and third state variable is current through inductor l2 that's that is that let's assume that is x3 so current flowing through this inductor is l3 now we need to find out uh, how we can derive the state space model of the circuit so applying the kvl to loop one what will be the kvl equation of loop one if this is loop 1 this is loop 2 kvl of loop 1 will be e that's actually your input voltage since there's only one input so we can simply write it as e equal to u uh, so let that be e is equal to uh, the voltage across this capacitor that's x1 e is equal to x1 plus x1 times r1 plus x1 plus L1 dx1 by dt that's x1 dot plus the voltage induced because of this inductor that's L2 that will be equal to M times uh, D the current flowing in this circuit that's x3 dx3 by dt so KVL to loop 1 will be equal to u input voltage is equal to voltage across the capacitor that's x1 plus voltage across the resistor uh, voltage across the resistor is the current flowing in the circuit that's x2 uh, multiplied by the resistor value r1 plus voltage across inductor l1 that's L1 dx1 by dt, dx1 by dt is nothing but x1 dot plus voltage that's induced because of uh, the current flowing in loop 2. The current flowing in loop 2 is x3 and this mutual inductance value is m. So the induced voltage will be m into dx3 by dt uh, that is m into x dot so this is your uh, equation uh, we have actually two variables here x1 dot and x3 dot so we will be having we'll be needing to reduce this further now let this be equation one for the beam for now uh, we understand the current flowing through the capacitor current flowing through this capacitor will be equal to C into voltage across it that is dV by dt that is dx1 by dt in other words current flowing through the capacitor uh, current through capacitor 
it's c d x one by d t at c x one dot. But we also know that that will be equal to the current that's actually flowing in this loop, and the current flowing in this loop is nothing but x two. So current flowing in this loop is x two. Uh, this was actually x two. Yeah, sorry for that. C x one dot will be equal to x two. So from here we can simply say that x one is equal to one by c times x two. So this is equation number two. Substituting this in equation number one, what we'll be getting is u is equal to x one plus uh, r one times x two plus l one times x one dot. Uh, instead of x one dot, we'll be writing now one by c x two. One by c. X two plus m x t dot. Fine. So m x t dot. This is actually x two dot. I'm uh, sorry, just for this mess up. Let's see again. We have x one the state variable across capacitor C. We have x two the current flowing through a inductor L one. We have x three the current flowing through inductor L two. So by KVL we have U is equal to x one plus x two R one plus L one x two dot plus M x three dot. But we also know that current through the capacitor will be uh, C x one dot. That's actually nothing but the current flowing through in this loop. That's x two. So from here we can say x one dot is equal to one by c times x two. Uh, so this is evident equation number two. Equation number one is a standalone equation for now. Now let's apply KVL to loop number two. So by applying KVL to loop number two, there is no voltage source here, so it is simply zero is equal to x three times R two plus Voltage across this inductor that's L two into dx three by dt plus mutually uh, the voltage induced by this mutual inductance so m times the current flowing in loop one that's x two so by a KVL in loop two we simply have uh, x three R two the voltage drop across resistor R two plus voltage drop across inductor L two is uh, L two times dx three by dt that's X three dot plus voltage induced by the current flowing in in loop one uh, defined by the mutual inductance M times X two dot. This is equal to zero. So we have uh, this is equation number three. Equation number one and equation number three. If we see them, they are uh, they have two variables X two dot and X three dot. Uh, so, from equation number three, let's say we can from equation number three uh, we can define x two dot as minus x three R two minus L two x three dot divided by M. Fine. So this is x two dot. Uh, this will be four. So substituting. Or in equation number one, what we'll be getting is uh, x one dot is equal to. So we're shooting four in one. We have u is equal to x one plus x two times r two plus l one x two dot l one x two dot. That's minus x three r two minus l two x three dot divided by m. Plus m x three dot. Fine. So solving this for x three dot, we'll be getting x three dot is equal to <coughs> uh, minus. I'm 
once you solve this equation you will find out m m square minus l1 l2 uh, minus x1 this whole multiplied by minus x1 minus x2 r2 plus l1 r2 by m times x3 plus u x3 dot is equal to this and substituting this uh, in equation number 4 then we will be getting x2 dot and so we can calculate that we will find out that x2 dot will be equal to minus uh, x3 r2 by m uh, minus l2 by m m into m square minus l1 l2 this whole thing multiplied by uh, minus x1 minus x2 r2 plus l1 r2 by m times x3 plus u so you can uh, solve this and finally uh, you can obtain the state space model x1 dot x2 dot x3 dot is equal to x1 x2 x3 this is again a single input single output system so x1 dot is 0 times x1 it's 1 by c times x2 is 0 times x3 x2 dot it is minus l2 divided by l1 l2 minus m square times x1 minus r2 l2 divided by l1 l2 minus m square uh, so what and x2 it will be equal to r2 m square plus twice l1 l2 uh, r2 divided by m l1 l2 minus m square times x2 and you will find out that x3 dot will be equal to m l1 l2 minus m square r2m divided by l1 l2 minus m square and this will be equal to l1 r2 divided by m square minus l1 l2 and x1 dot is 0 times u uh, this will be dependent upon u l2 l1 l2 minus m square and this will be m divided by m square minus l1 l2 so you can actually try to figure this thing out and if output is nothing but the voltage equal to the capacitor x1 c1 c uh, in that case y will be x1 x2 x3 plus u times u fine so you can actually uh, see these equations uh, try to verify whether these equations are correct or not uh, so the only thing here is that uh, while generating KVL equations you have to consider the effect of mutual inductance as well. So the voltage induced in loop 1 because of the current flowing in loop 2 and the voltage induced in loop 2 because of the current flowing in loop 1. You have to take that into consideration depending upon the mutual inductance value uh, between these two inductors. So uh, that's all for this session. So we have actually done two exam two uh, problems today. One was uh, case of multiple input multiple output system and another one was the case of a circuit which was mutually uh, there was some um, mutual cu coupling between two magnetically uh, coupled circuits. So that's all for today.